Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well today we're using Elementor Pro and you will need the Pro version to do this today to create a custom pop-up. It's one of the great features, inbuilt features of the Pro version. You can create pop-ups with no plugins, which is awesome. So I've got a page here. When I refresh it, after two seconds you'll see a little pop-up. And there it is. Simple little pop-up. We're going to capture their name, email address, and they can subscribe right there. If they click anywhere outside of it, it's going to disappear. Really easy to do with Elementor Pro, so let's get started. Okay, as we're creating a custom one, I'm going to actually build it first on this page right here. You can build it any way you want. We've got, we're going to save it to our library and you can delete it after you've built it. So I'm going to hit the Edit with Elementor button. And we'll go down and we'll just create a little pop-up. And to do this, I'm going to use a little blurb module for the top, or a little icon box, I should say. Left click and drag it, pop it in there. That's fine, I'll style it up in a minute. And uh, let's go and grab a little form. We'll go down, here's the forms. I'm going to pop that one underneath for the email capture. Now, if I roll that up a bit so you can see what's going on. I don't want a message field. I just want them to put their name in and an email. You might just want an email. If so, just delete the name field right there. Okay, input size is fine. Labels, name and email. I don't really want to show those, so I'm going to turn those off. Here's the button down below. I want it to say subscribe. Now, it, as you can see, it's full width or justified there, which is great. You can have it right aligned, little button, left aligned, and central if you want. I quite like that full width button, so I'm going to leave mine just like that. Let's move on down. Actions after submit. Well, it's going to pop up a little message saying that it's been submitted, but you can add new features by clicking on here. For instance, if you want to redirect to a URL, as you can see, it's added redirect down below there. And you can put the URL you want to redirect them to. You can just put a hashtag in there if you want it to go up to the top of the page. Or you can redirect them anywhere, you're, anywhere you want. I don't particularly want that. I just want the message, so I'm going to leave that just as it is. But there's also great features for integrating things like MailChimp and ActiveCampaign, GetResponse, Drip. For instance, if you put MailChimp in, comes up with a little MailChimp entry down below which is really handy. You'll need to put in your API key and once you put in there, put that in there, you can choose the list from your MailChimp account. And to integrate MailChimp in there you have to set up your API key. Let's go to the dashboard and if you go to Elementor into settings you'll see integrations here and you can add things like recaptures for your forms if you roll down a little bit, they've got a place for your MailChimp API key, Drip, Active Campaign, all kind of mailing systems there. But I'm just using a regular email today, but this is a really useful feature. I've just built one for a customer using MailChimp using that. Okay, we're well back to our little form here. So I don't really want that MailChimp, so let's take that one off. There's plenty of options for you to choose from there. Great. Move down to the email. Where do you want it to go to? Well, by default, that's the admin email. So just put in whatever email you want there. That's going to be when it comes into your email client. That's what it's going to say. And that's it's going to tell you who it's from. So we're pretty much in good shape there. You can add different steps if you want to, but I'm actually quite happy with what's going on there. There are additional options. You can give form IDs and what have you and put them in there and create custom messages. This form was sent successfully, works perfectly for me. If they fail to put something in, it's not gonna send. You can make these required in your form if you want to. Okay, well, let's style this thing up just a little bit. 
First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the column itself, a little dark tab there, give it a background. For fun, I'm going to give it a background image. So let's go to a style. Here's the background type. Hit the little paintbrush there. You can have a, a color and an image, or you can put a gradient in there, or you can put a slideshow in there if you want, but I'm just going to use a simple image. And I've only got one on this site, so I guess we'll use this one. That's fine. Great, so we've got our background in there. I'm going to give it a bit of padding all around just to give it a bit of space. So I'm going to go over to my advanced tab. We're still in the column here. And let's give it 50 pixels all around. As with most Elementor boxes for padding, if you've got this little chain checked right there, it'll do all four at once. If you want to do different for the various sides, just uncheck the chain there. Okay, well that's great. Let's just give it a little border and make it stand out. Because it's going to be on top of exactly the same picture there. It will darken out the background. But that's fine. So let's just give it a little border. Solid. Just going to make it two pixels. I'm going to make it white. And that'll do, that's absolutely fine. Okay, well let's just tidy up this little thing, make it a little more legible. Let's get a more interesting icon. And they're using Font Awesome, which has got a huge amount of icons here. It really is good. Let's say user. And grab one. I think I'll leave it that color. And we'll go into our style. And here's the content. I'm going to make that white, it stands out a bit better. I'll do that for the text as well. Great, so we're in pretty good shape. I just want to style up that button a bit. So let's go into our form, just down below here. Really the only thing I want to do is the button itself. Let's go over to style. Here's the button style down here. Let's change that to perhaps black. There we go. The hover state. Let's make it red. It might be a bit too much on the blue background. Let's make it a lighter blue perhaps. That's fine. Okay, well I'm happy with that. We got our little icon, a heading, a bit of text that tells them how great it will be to sign up. They can put in their name, their email, and they can submit the the little pop up here. So now I'm going to save this to my library, little blue tag right here. Save as template. We'll give it a name. And let's save it. There it is right there. Okay. Now we've done it, we can get rid of it. Don't need it unless you particularly want to leave it on the bottom of your page there. Now let's turn it into a pop-up. So again, we can go to our dashboard, we can go down to templates and then pop-ups. I've already got that one that I created initially there. Let's just trash that. This is what you'll get if you've not created one already. Let's create our first pop-up. You can select the type of template. We want a pop-up. We don't want a header or a footer or a post. We want the pop-up. That's what it, where it is. Give it a name. Create the template. Now you can go to Elementor site if you've got the pro version and hook up and download all kinds of different templates here. But like I say, we're doing a custom one today that we've just built there, so there's no point doing this. So let's go over to my templates, which is the one that we've just created right here. We'll insert it. And there it is. And you might see it pop up and spin like that, but that's absolutely fine. I'm going to hit the publish. And once you do that, it's going to ask you where do you want to display it. Let's add a condition. Do you want it on the entire site? Do you want it just on the archives? Or do you just want it on a singular page? 
I'm going to put it on a singular page, front page. You can add more conditions. You can exclude things by adding another condition and exclude it from a certain page if you want to. But uh, I'm happy for it just to pop up on the front page. And next down, let's see what's going to trigger it. I want it to trigger on page load here. So I'm going to flip that one to on. I think I want it to trigger perhaps after 1.5 seconds or 2 seconds. Let's put 1.5. The other one was 2. You can trigger it on scroll if you want to. And if you turn that on, it'll give you a percentage of how far down before it pops up. This really is a great feature. Uh, usually you have to get a nice expensive plugin to do this for you. You can do it on scroll to element. You can do it on click. And again, if they click once, it's going to pop up or you can change that however you want. You can set it to do it after so much time of inactivity. If they've not done anything for 30 seconds, it'll pop up. And here's a great one on page exit intent. That means if they're going to exit out of the page, it'll pop up. That's always a nice one to have on. OK, you can set advanced rules if you want to dig deep in there. You can say show after so many page views. Put in the number of page views. Show after so many se sessions, how many times people have come back. Show so many times, like a maximum. At the moment, it's going to keep showing every time they go to the, the first page. You can just set it to how you want here. I'm happy for it to show every time. If they've arrived from a specific URL, another website you got or a landing page, you can pop that in there. Show when arriving from. You can choose a search engine, external link or an internal link, internal page from your site. Hide for log users. That means if you're logged in, you won't see it. And you can show on all devices. I'm going to leave that on because I want it to show on tablets and mobiles. If you want to not show it on one of those, simply delete the one you don't want or ones you don't want. So we should be pretty much to go there. Let's save this. And let's have a look. And it's popped it up over its own blank page. And there's the pop up. There's our little border. Here's the field that they can fill in. And there's the sub right there. Let's make sure it's going to work on the front end. So I'm going to open this in a new incognito tab. One point five seconds. There's our little pop up. Fantastic. Just what we want. Like I say, usually you have to pay a lot of money for for an external plugin to do that for you. It really is a great inbuilt feature of Elementor Pro. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. That is how to add a pop up with Elementor Pro. So I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.